Welcome to another episode of the Recharge Podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Schwent. I'm curious if you speak this language or understand those who do. It's called the Bakazai language. Perhaps you might understand its cousin, the Budai language, a little bit more fitting, a little bit more common. What I'm getting at really is the language of self-sabotage. If you don't speak this language, I applaud you for your self-mastery. But if you find yourself surrounded by those who speak these words, it's time to move on. Do your friends constantly use the because I, the but I, the should I phrases to sabotage your efforts to make suggestions on how they could improve their life, improve their health, shift their business, improve their relationships? Oh, but I could never, or because I can't, because X, Y, and Z. I mean, how often do we hear those phrases? And it's really just a form of self-sabotage, whether you're saying it yourself or someone who's close to you, maybe it's a student, an athlete a colleague at work. It doesn't really matter. Know this, there are some effective strategies that you can implement to deal with the because I language. And it's really with the goal of overcoming fear to help you get what you want from life or help your client or student get what they want out of a particular situation. So I'm going to give you three tips here. The first is the strategy of knowing your why. Simply knowing why you do what you do and what's at stake will really shift the mindset. Be sure to dig several layers deep. For example, it's not losing seven pounds is is not the why. It's much more complex than a number. It might be to look good, to feel great, to improve blood pressure, blood sugar, to eat healthier, to avoid becoming diabetic, or even just to set a good example for the, your kids. Knowing the why will really drive home the decision-making and provide a higher level of motivation. Knowing what's at stake if you fail to achieve an outcome is critical. The next is to be flexible, and really, there, there is no success without failure. It's just part of the process, and we got to get out of the mindset that everything has to be a success. It just it doesn't work that way. You know it, and I know it, and it doesn't mean that you failed or that you're not cut out for something. It just really means that the universe is showing up to nudge you in a direction that's closer to the answer and the outcome that you're looking for. And the final take-home point and strategy here is to really visualize the outcome that you're after. So many people focus on what they don't want. It's it's like driving a race car. You have to look where you're going. If you look at the wall, you're going to crash into the wall. It's It's just a known fact. The same is for life. Stop answering questions about what you want by generating a list of all the things that you don't. I hear this constantly with my coaching clients and students when we talk about an outcome or a goal. Oftentimes, we'll get three or four things that they don't want, and they're focusing on that, and they're pulling that into their life. And so I just really encourage you to aim your attitude where you want to go. Take a look at some things in your life. Look at the last few days, even the last few hours. How often did you speak the Kazai language and made excuses for not getting what you want? It's time to shift your focus, change your language, and let your soul speak its truth. I'm telling you, the universe will conspire to help you. If you found value here, please like, comment, and share. And I look forward to talking with you on the next episode. Have a fantastic week.